everyone, welcome to a new adventure. As you can see, I have some special guests with me. This is my beautiful wife, Cassie, who you haven't seen in about a year, I think. It's been a while. On the channel, and then our cute little dog, Bowser. We are in Montana. We're about three hours from home. This is just a two-day trip, quick trip. Both days will be in this video. The entire trip will be in this video. Our focus here is gonna be southwestern Montana, basically the areas around Butte and Bozeman. Gonna go see and do a handful of few things around each place. Should be a really fun trip. Right now we're walking up this rough road that was too rough for my car. Just uh, should be another few minutes. So this place is called Ringing Rocks. And basically it's unique in that if you hammer on some of these rocks with a hammer, they make a a really interesting ringing sound. It really does sound like ringing a bell. I don't know if you can really hear anyone doing that over there right now. I brought a couple of hammers, so give one to each of us and start hammering away. All right, Cassie found a good ringing rock over here. That's a good one. <laughs> Ooh, that one's good. This is how a rock normally sounds. Just regular. And these are the ringing ones. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Bowser is enjoying this, but we definitely are. I don't know if this is coming through well, the audio <laughs> is coming through in the video, but this is really cool, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I'll just sit here and hit rocks all day. <laughs> That's fun. I'm gonna try to scramble up to the top of this pile here, the top of the rocks. Okay, here's the view from the top. Really beautiful area. I think these are the Highland Mountains out there in the distance on the horizon. And this is all, I think this is mostly BLM and National Forest land out here. There's lots of public land. We're maybe half an hour from Butte right now. And rocks covering the hillside over there. This is a neat area. You could spend a lot of time exploring this place. That was a lot of fun. I think we spent about 20 minutes here. Yeah. So. Yeah. What a what a strange place. I've never never seen anything like this. Cassie was saying, we need some of these at our house. <laughs> maybe when we buy a house we'll have someone dump a bunch of rocks a, a truckload of rocks in the yard and hopefully some of them <laughs> some of them will ring uh -huh. there was this kid on the other side she was saying i don't think we have to worry about snakes here because annoying kids like us keep banging on the rocks <laughs> that was like good point <laughs> it's just a few minutes walk back to the car and then we're gonna drive about half an hour to our next destination We are now at this pretty little park and day use area in the mountains south of Butte. We're gonna go for a bike ride. Got both of our bikes on the back of the car here. I've got a, I think this was, this was like a $60 spare tire bike rack. We're gonna get these together and then head out on the trail. So there is a, a trail out here. It is a an old rail trail, or more specifically, it is currently a rail trail. It used to be a railroad, it used to be a train track, and they converted it into a trail. So the grade is nice and easy. It's not too steep. We're gonna ride this for a couple of miles through a couple of tunnels, and then there's a spot at the end, the place that we're really aiming toward that looks pretty spectacular from the pictures that I've seen online.
got my bike ready to go here. Cassie's bike ready to go here. She's just cleaning off the seat a little bit. And then Bowser is gonna ride in this little basket that we're gonna attach to the handlebars on my bike. Okay, basket is on. Only thing left to do is to put a little boy in it. <laughs> he doesn't love going in the basket here, but... It's okay. Sit down. He'll survive. Settle. There you go. Good boy. So cute. He got like gum stuck to him. Stay there. Ready to go? Uh-huh. You ready to go? <laughs> Sit the trail. Good boy. And I'm going to be recording on the GoPro for uh, for the majority of this this adventure here. My bike is making a lot of weird sounds. I apologize for that. I'm not a bike mechanic. And I haven't gotten it tuned this year. So this trail is called the Milwaukee Road or the Milwaukee Trail. Okay. Yeah, this way. Okay, this is better. A little bit steep getting up to this from the parking lot, but this is awesome. Beautiful area, beautiful place. Nice trail here. It's not paved, but I mean, it's a good, hard packed dirt road. I'm not having any problem pedaling with Bowser on here. Usually when we go for a bike ride, Bowser's a little bit uncertain and skittish at the beginning, but he gets used to it and he gets comfortable pretty quick. Maybe not comfortable, maybe it's more just resigned to his fate, but he accepts it and he, he does well on bike rides overall. Some old railroad ties over there. This is the first of two tunnels we'll be biking through. Okay, so. Cannot see a thing in this tunnel. I think this is the shorter of the two tunnels. I do have a headlamp and a couple of lights, but uh, Cassie didn't want to stop. <laughs> didn't want to stop and get the, the lights out. There we go, we made it through. Ah, how was it? <laughs> it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. From here to where we're going is slightly uphill. I mean, this isn't steep. You know, trains don't go like straight up a mountain, so it's a very gradual grade. But we're going the slightly uphill way, and then on the way back, it'll be slightly downhill. But it feels very mild very moderate this is not a steep climb by any means bowser he's growling he can hear some voices of people in the tunnel he's very protective tunnel number two. Oh, there's snow and ice on this I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have a little square filming light here that I use to film when it's dark. I'm using that to light the way ahead of me a little bit here. Cassie has a headlamp. up here on our destination just popped into view it's a bridge it's an old trestle bridge a spectacular bridge over this little narrow canyon here wow this is spectacular 
and bumpy. These pieces of wood over here are what I should have ridden on to. That's what Cassie is on. I'm just on the regular very bumpy surface of the bridge here, but it is awesome. Wow. What do you think? It's a little hard to stay on this. <laughs> When you first get on the bridge, it just opens up and then it's kind of, if this weren't so bumpy, it might feel like you're floating on air, but <laughs> it's a little too old for that. Really cool bridge here and there's a nice little creek flowing down below us. You can actually drive to right underneath the bridge here. I think we might do that once we get back to the car. It's not much of a of an additional drive, not much of a detour. It reminds me a lot of the Hiawatha Trail which I biked a year or two ago. Just spectacular. All right we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go another mile or so up the trail this way. And then we'll turn around once we get to the, the ending spot up there. Ooh, this part is steep. And I'm not used to riding with a creature on my handlebars. The end is in sight. I see a gate just ahead of me here. <sighs> and this right here is our ending point. This is the other trailhead. Whew. Okay, up. All right, I made it up to the top here. There's this little trailhead parking area along the highway. This is called Pipestone Pass. And this is actually on the Continental Divide. So on one side of the divide, all the water flows into the Atlantic Ocean and water's connecting to it. On the other side, the water flows into the Pacific Ocean and the water's connecting to it. So we are straddling that divide. We are right on top of the Continental Divide right here. And this trail, this is actually the Continental Divide Trail. So this trail goes from Mexico to Canada through New Mexico and Colorado and Wyoming and Montana and Idaho. I don't know if you can really see this, but it says Continental Divide Trail. From the original trailhead to the bridge it took us about 40 minutes. It was two and a half miles. Then from the bridge to here was another I don't know, 15 minutes, maybe a, maybe less, I don't know, it's about a mile or so. Hey Bowser, Bowser's happy to be out of his prison, out of his cage. Thoughts? That, that was nice until that last part. <laughs> yeah, the last part was steep. Yeah, and I, I need to fix the gears on my bike because they don't stay <laughs> where I want them to stay. Yeah, we definitely have some bike maintenance to do here. I think we're gonna rest up here a little bit and then turn around and coast downhill, cruise all the way back to the trailhead.
made it. It took us about 35 minutes to get back to the car, including some stops for pictures. Bowser is in one piece. How'd you like it? It was great. It was even better on the way back when I learned how to ride my bike. <laughs> yeah, Cassie, uh, Cassie needs some instruction on the gearing on her bike. We'll, we'll work on that, but overall, it's a lot of fun. We're gonna go find some dinner in Butte. I almost forgot, but at the last minute before we got dinner, I remembered that I wanted to go drive underneath the bridge, and so we did. It's just a seven minute drive from the trailhead from where we started and ended the bike ride. You can just park and drive right underneath it. Really, really neat. And now it's time for dinner in Butte. We made it to Butte. We're not gonna spend a ton of time here. I have other videos about Butte if you wanna check that out. I'll put one of them in the video description and then there's a, an adventure know-how bonus video from several months ago where we spent quite a bit of time here in winter. We love this city. Super cool buildings here. But we are gonna have dinner at a taco place right on the corner here. Taco del Sol. Come to the Mountain Con mine above town here, above Butte. This is one of the old copper mines in town. Great views of the city from up here. This is one of our favorite places. There's a little bike path that goes up that way and down this way. And here's uptown Butte, kind of the downtown area. There's Bowser. Show you what we got for dinner. Cassie got some fish tacos. How are they? Good. <laughs> I got a giant burrito that is dripping salsa, but it also is really, really good. Well, it's about an hour and 45 minutes later. It's quite a long drive to get out here. We're in the mountains in the Tobacco Root Mountains. This is a mountain range that I've never been to before, so I wanted to come and camp here, even though there were closer places to camp, easier places to camp. The road leading here was is pretty bumpy. It's not awful, but it's just really rocky and bumpy. It's a slow road, so it took a while to get out here. We're kind of halfway between Butte and Bozeman with a little bit of a detour, but let me show you the campsite here. There are Cassie and Bowser over there. There is a creek just on the other side of the campsite that I'll show you in a minute here. Got mountains above us. There are some incredible mountains farther up the valley here that I'll show you right now. I'll take some drone footage and I'll roll that drone footage here. And we passed a bunch of campsites lower down in the canyon, but uh, it's the weekend and a lot of people were camped down there. This is the first available campsite that we came to. It's free, dispersed camping. Great spot. There's Bowser in his cute little sweater. Cassie in her cute SUV RVing hoodie. <laughs> and then here's the creek or the river. This is the South Boulder River. Just you know, 30 feet from camp here. Really pretty creek. Over here, there's an interesting little shelter, a little bushcraft shelter.
Doesn't get much better than this. This is fantastic. Here's our sleeping setup in the back. It's gonna be a chilly night tonight. We have a ton of sleeping bags and Bowser will keep us warm. And awake because and he awake. snores so loud. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a little snorer. Ready for bed? Yep, I'm tired. <laughs> And with that, I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's about 10 o'clock the next morning. I slept pretty terribly. Bowser slept in between us and uh, was just kicking me and cuddling up against me all night, which on one hand is kind of nice. Like it's nice to feel him there, but he was also taking up a significant chunk of my side of the mattress. So I wasn't very comfortable. We'll ask Cassie in a minute here how she slept, but it's a beautiful morning. I'm ready for the day. I'm excited for the day. There's one last look at the campsite and of the creek before we get out of here. And let me show you what we have in the back, how we've organized everything. So basically we pushed all of our bedding toward the back and then this is, is Bowser's stuff. This is the basket for the bike and his food and leash and everything in there. This bag is my clothes and my camera gear. This bag is empty, it's just a, an empty hiking backpack that we'll put food and snacks in as necessary. Here's Bowser. And then here are Cassie's bags over here. This one has uh, clothes and toiletries. And then this smaller bag is kind of her purse. It's got her book and her, her wallet and, uh, and makeup and everything. And so last night when it was time for bed, we just moved these things up to the front seats. And then this morning we moved them back it's a simple setup and it requires very little specialized gear. You just need basically a flat surface and a mattress and a cute little dog. So Cassie, how'd you sleep last night? Um, I think I slept pretty good. I got too hot and Bowser snoring woke me up. It wasn't as loud as it could have been but it was still loud enough to wake me up a couple times in the night. But overall, it was really nice to be able to go back to sleep to the sound of the river over here. Yeah, the creek here, I mean, this is the best white noise you can get. Just perfect, constant, natural sound. It's really nice. We are now gonna head out of here. We're gonna drive to Bozeman, which I'm guessing will take us an hour and a half, maybe two hours to get to. We've got a couple of things planned there, nothing too crazy. We're just gonna pop into a couple of spots that we've been wanting to go back to, and then we'll hit the road and continue on into the mountains from there. We are in Bozeman and it's super busy. It's Saturday today, so a lot of people out. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here. There's one shop we wanna go into and then one restaurant and then we're gonna hit the road again. But this is, this is Main Street in Bozeman. It's a really cool shopping area. Some really interesting shops along here. We're going into a honey shop and a beekeeping shop that's over this way. Cassie's into bees and honey, and, and the last time we were here, the shop was closed, I think? Yeah. So she didn't uh, have a chance to go in, so we're gonna go in now and check it out. Montana Honey Bee Company. So I've actually been in here before. I went without Cassie to get her a, a candle one time. I think like on this side, there's beekeeping stuff, and then on this side, there's honey and souvenirs and stuff like that. So here's the inside of the shop here, just a bunch of different honeys, and uh, they've got Honey's local here to Montana and from neighboring states, and then they've got some creamed honeys over here. All sorts of different flavors, like right here we have pineapple coconut, and raspberry, sour cherry, triple berry, lots of flavored honeys here. Honey drops, honey popcorn, huckleberry, cinnamon, lemon, some really beautiful candles over here in different shapes. Mm -hmm. 
rows of lotions and salves and body butter, soap. And then here's the section that's all beekeeping supplies. All right, so we got a few things at the store. Show us, uh, show us the goods. Have to unwrap it. So I got a little four ounce jar of the Tupelo honey. This is a super rare honey because the tree doesn't flower very long. And so they have to ship their bees over. I think this one comes from Florida. So they ship their bees over to Florida harvest it <laughs> and then they followed it up here this and was how much was this so this was about $14 just under $14 yeah, so it's pricey but that's because it's rare but it said that it has a buttery taste and um, doesn't really crystallize so it'll last a long time on your shelf I'm excited and then we got these two little chocolate things and not sure exactly what these are, but they were cheap. They were like a dollar at the counter, so we tossed these into. But yeah, some kind of chocolate honey treats. And then for lunch, stuffed crepes and waffles. We'll go in and order the things for us while Cassie and Bowser stay outside here. We've come to a park called Centennial Park here in Bozeman to eat our food and to let Bowser roam around a little bit. I got a waffle with brownies, strawberries, Nutella, and whipped cream. Cassie got a crepe with cream cheese and strawberries. How is it? It's great. I love cream cheese. <laughs> well, that was an excellent waffle. That was really, really good. And Cassie liked her her crepe too. And we're now just sitting in the park playing with Bowser. We have a little frisbee that we like to throw for him. And usually he's pretty good at bringing, him, bringing it back. He's not so good at catching it. He can catch it maybe one out of like 10 or 15 times, but he makes a valiant effort and he's, he's cute when he brings it back. Oh, so close. If you guys are looking for a really good little dog water bottle, and if you have a smallish dog, we really like this thing. It's a bottle with a flip up bowl. This black bowl part is kind of a, a rubber that folds down. And then any unused water just can be squeezed back down into the bottle. Like that. Oh, he caught it! Good job, boy! Once we're done playing with Bowser here, we're gonna go for about an hour-long drive south into the mountains. We're gonna go to Big Sky. Big Sky is a little town up in the mountains. It's a ski resort. Now that it's summertime, there's no skiing, obviously, but it's still a pretty place up in the mountains. I've actually never been there, so I'm excited to go there. And uh, we're gonna go on a little hike once we get there. All right, this is the next hike we're gonna do, the last outing on this trip, Oozle Falls. I've never done this, but apparently it's a pretty easy hike or walk, and uh, it's an extremely popular trail. I think it's about a mile or two each way. It's, it's not too bad. This Oozle Falls is not to be confused with a different Oozle Falls that's a couple hours away in Yellowstone. That one is spelled O-U-Z-E-L. This one is spelled O-U-S-E-L. I do know that it's a type of bird. It's like a small water bird that's in this area. This is the south fork of the west fork of the Gallatin River. It's not a mouthful at all.
is a lot of water flowing over those falls right now. Worth the hike? Yeah, and it's nice and refreshing too. And then this is going up to the top of the waterfall. That was a lot of fun. Really loud down there. Very loud and cold, lots of mist, lots of puddles, but that was great. I think it's about eight tenths of a mile each way, so not bad at all. And I think we're gonna end the video here. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it's probably one of my top favorite trips that we've been on together. <laughs> and uh, I forgot to mention earlier in the video that this is our anniversary trip. Our anniversary is in a few days, and so we decided to take a trip. We do a trip or do some kind of adventure every year to celebrate our anniversary. And it's our three year anniversary. We've been married for three years. And it's the six year anniversary of our first date. We got married on the three year anniversary of our first date, if that makes any sense to you. But <laughs> overall, great trip. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. It's always great to have Cassie on the trips with me. She can't come a lot, but when she does, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It definitely adds to the, to, the, to the adventure and to the videos. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We're gonna head home. It's about a two hour drive from here. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.